Hey, it's already hackers. So to go along with the, our review of the Surfer SEO software, we wanted to put together a tutorial for you as well. Uh, just a really quick one, just to give you an idea of how the software works, how quick it is, what the interface is like. So basically what you, you can expect from it when you're using it. Um, and this is why we also use it internally too. So what we have here in front of us is the Surfer SEO dashboard which as you can see is nice and streamlined. I particularly like it because it has a minimalist approach. It, it, there's not lots of fields to be filled in and boxes to be ticked and other things to be done before you can actually get started. All you need to do is enter your keyword domain or URL for analysis and literally click on go. So what we're going to do for this tutorial is we're going to do a live analysis of an authority hacker page. And the topic of that page is how to make money blogging. So once you've typed in the keyword you want to analyze the SERPs for, you then have a choice between desktop scrape or mobile scrape. That's basically which index you want to go from. You have the option of choosing either a quick or a full analysis. The only real difference here is that the full analysis takes screenshots of the page. So it's more detailed. Uh, it does take a little bit longer uh, but not so long that it, you know, you're kind of sitting there for hours. And I suppose that's the, the first real benefit you're going to notice with Surfer SEO versus some other on-page analysis tools out there at the moment is just the, the pure speed um, and just general easy use. So we're going to leave it set a quick. You can then choose your geographic location and there are lots of them, but we are going to leave it set at United States. And we are just going to click on enter or return. So in direct comparison to other software out there at the moment, like uh, Page Optimizer Pro, for example, where actually submitting a query can take a couple of minutes because you have to find competitors and you have to fetch keyword variations. And there, there's just a little bit of kind of to and and from before you actually get to the point of analyzing the keyword. And then when you do go through the analysis, it takes several minutes to produce it. But that's just for Page Optimizer Pro. Whereas with say something like Cora, it could take potentially hours depending on the depth of your analysis. So we've submitted it here now and it's been running for a couple of seconds. And I'm just going to pause the video really quickly um, to let it complete. I'm going to start a stopwatch on it. Okay, so the analysis is finished and ready to go. So time in that, it took about a minute and a half to two minutes, give or take, um, to actually complete the analysis. So it was done really, really quickly. Um, I've seen Surfer return results in uh, as little as 30 seconds, um, but I am using it probably at pretty much the busiest part of the day on the busiest day of the week. So uh, if it's run a little bit more slowly today, I'm not going to criticize it for that. But on average, I expect to see data coming back from it within about 70 to 75 seconds. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at the data it has waiting for us. It says, please wait a few seconds while we are saving hours of your work. Um, yeah, it does. If you've ever had to do on page um, SEO analysis manually, you'll know that it's time consuming is an understatement. So the first thing you'll notice about Surfer SEO is the interface is a, a real departure from what you might be used to with other similar tools in that it's very visual and something I like about it as well is it, it defaults to a given setting which is the word count per page or the, what it calls the body words. Now uh, as you can see in the graph here it's it's average in every 10 sites but if we pull that down to about three, we get a kind of a more accurate representation of the number of words on each page for each site ranking for this particular term. Uh, and you can actually turn averages off if you want to see specifically what each page, the word count for each page is. Though the first page has a word count of 2,555, page two, position two is 3,077, so on and so forth. This is just a nice visual representation of what you're working towards. Now, Surfer SEO goes way above and beyond the Call of Duty because it brings in back data from the first 47, 48 pages um, from the SERPs. So uh, you have a lot of data to work through. The first thing we need to do here is we need to go and grab the URL for our article, which is the how to make money blogging. And we're going to come down here and we're going to plug it in here 
under where it says compare your website to competitors and we're going to click on compare and Surfer SEO will very kindly go off and do this analysis for us and as you can see it does it really really quickly. Now when you perform that step what you will see is I'm actually going to turn averages on just to declutter the screen a little bit. What you'll see is that your URL appears here as this straight line across the page versus the other sites that are ranking as well. So if we look at word count for the Authority Hacker article, it's, it comes in at like 8,373 words versus uh, an average of 3,465 for the pages ranking position one to three. Um, so we are well above word count. Now, to be fair, a certain amount of words for in this blog post are actually blog comments on it. So they need to be taken into account. Our next step then is to scroll back down. We're going to go to our URL where we did the comparison and we're going to click on audit. Now audit is a real lifesaver in terms of on-page analysis because you could go through all the separate metrics out here and kind of figure out what's important and it actually makes that quite easy. You can see these bars here. The more bars they are, there are the more important that is for you to take care of in terms of your own page uh, but the audit is, is really nice because it tells you that you have errors and warnings so there are lots and lots of other areas that you can take care of such as like common words phrase common phrases missing and common words or numbers missing but you also have the errors and warnings so we're going to, we're going to just focus on those for the purpose of this tutorial um, so you can see what we're talking about now the first error that we have here highlighted in red is common backlinks missing we're only going to focus on on page for this tutorial so we're going to bypass that it is a nice feature though and it is very similar to what the link intersect tool in ahrefs offers if you already have ahrefs then you won't need to worry about this but if you don't it basically shows you all the links that your competitors have that you do not which is obviously important because uh, backlinks influence rankings uh, so if we look down through what we have done really well we things like words and body or word count is fine, words and paragraphs is fine, words and strong is fine, words in our H2 to H6 tags is fine, so lots of good stuff there. Um, then for our exact keywords we have 0 0.19 keywords per body which is fine. If we scroll down a little bit I just want to show you one example here where it says we have 11 exact keywords and paragraphs. Now even though this isn't, this doesn't come up as a warning so it's not a critical issue just to show you how Surfer actually represents these differences. It gives you a graph which is a nice at a glance representation of where you stand. So in terms of our exact keyword in our different paragraphs we have 11 instances of it whereas the average is well between one and oh, sorry the average is three but anywhere from one to eight. So you can see that for the different competing pages have like two instances, one instance, eight instances, one instance, three instances, and we're at 11. So this is an important aspect to use in Surfer SEO where you're not always adding content to a page to optimize it. You might need to de-optimize it a little bit. So in this case, I'm going to de-optimize our page just a tiny bit to reduce this by a couple of instances to get it down to like the top average of our competitors. So that's issue number one. Issue number two then is partial keywords per, per 100 keywords in body just to show you what that means. So we are standing at 8.77 versus 12.3. So page ranking number one for this keyword has 12.3 partial keywords per 100 keywords in body and we are on the lower side of things. So we will need to bring that up a little bit, which I am going to do. And then we're gonna come back and look at an audit again. So we're gonna hide that and we're gonna scroll down a little bit further. So number of elements, everything is fine, and characters in our title and our meta description. So we're off here too. If we look at characters in our title, we see we're at 41 characters versus, I mean, the number one, uh, the number page ranking number one is at 19 characters, and I, I'm not really comfortable writing the, the title tag that short because it just seems a bit spammy. But somewhere in the kind of not quite 60s but maybe just high 40s or very early 50s is what I'll be aimed for here and the same thing applies to our characters meta description we have a little bit of work to do there too because we're at 93 and you know the the average is a little bit higher there so 
need to take a look at those. Now, just to explain that the areas that we're going to address are partial keywords. Um, I'm going to look at the optimizing the exact keywords per paragraph and I'm going to look at our the page title and the meta description for the page as well. Now, just to explain where you get your partial keywords. You can choose them from a, a, a couple of different sections. You can choose popular words, popular phrases, common words or common phrases. I have a tendency to optimize with popular phrases because they, they're multi-word phrases. So I, I can kind of get more bang for my buck that way. So the good thing, the like a really neat feature here is that the partial keyword matches are highlighted in yellow. So again, there's lots and lots of keywords on the page, but it's showing you these are the partial keywords that you you should consider including which is nice. Now, the one little snag with that is this shows you the first four pages of your competitors and you actually need to scroll across and then scroll back up to see the rest, which is a little bit cumbersome, but still lots and lots of data there. Um, in terms of your partial match keywords, you can also have a look at common phrases again for the same thing. It will show you how many pages are using these partial matches that you might be missing. Now, sometimes Surfer does make the odd mistake saying that you're missing a keyword when you're actually not it just doesn't get the um, partial or variation quite right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to flip over to the authority hacker site i'm going to make some changes and i'm going to come back and we'll run the audit all over again so i'll talk to you in a little bit okay and we're back so i spent a little time um, going over the blog posts uh, going through and adding some partial keywords, um, adjusting the title tag, adjusting the meta tag, and then de-optimizing the exact matches per paragraph. So if we come back down here and we refresh our URL and a couple of seconds, we run our audit again. Now that it's loaded. So we started off with two errors and three warnings um, we're down to one error and two warnings now so again one of those errors is the most common backlinks which um, are missing common backlinks rather so we're going to skip past that because it's not something we're dealing with right now and if we scroll down we can see now that our partial keyword match is still not perfect but we started out at uh 8.72 or 8.77 we're now up to 9.07 so again the way it works with server seo is that you don't go in and make lots of changes to your exact phrases and your partial phrases and everything else um and then come back like hours later and run an audit because you'll find that things will shift up and down so you you may need to add in more exact keywords or take out some partial keywords or uh, vice versa um so where we are at the moment is 9.07, which is a pretty big improvement from where we were before. There's still more work to do, so I'll do that in an additional couple of passes on the article. The next thing we wanted to have a look at was, sorry, our exact keywords and paragraphs where we were at 11. Um, we're down to 10 now, so I had to do a little bit of tweak in there. I only got it down to one again. I will come back to that later on and I'll de-optimize a little bit further. And then our final little bit of analysis was um, our title tag and our meta description. So we've green check marks in both of those now at the moment. I just added in two additional words to the title and I added in about five or six additional words to the meta description. And that's it. That's how easy it is to use Surfer SEO. You literally come in, add your URL, compare it against everything else, run your audit, treat your audit like a cheat sheet, literally deal with the most serious issues first, and then you can deal with the optional stuff later on, like missing common phrases, even, even though, as you can see, these actually came down as well, because by adding in partial words, some of those are missing common phrases as well, um, or common phrases that are missing. So you kind of have that, those incidental results too, which is why you don't want to go in and do a ton of work and then realize like, oh no, I have to undo half it. Um, so that's all you need to do. You, you run your audit, you go through your checklist, you pick out the items you want to work on. You then go back to your site, make the edits you need to make. And then the final step, once you've done that, is to run your audit again. There's a certain amount of balance you have to achieve here, which is achieving a perfect audit score is unlikely because you'll be down to a really granular level at that stage where it may be just 
a handful of words that aren't quite agreeing with the surf seo audit so it's a case of finding balance where your content looks well reads well and is seo optimized but isn't keyword stuff because that isn't what this is about we're on page content optimization is not about keyword stuffing it's about making the content the best that it can be while also appealing to google and the other search engines your final step once you've completed your audit and updated your content and you're satisfied with your balance is then just to take your url log into your google search console and then submit the url again to get it indexed as quickly as possible uh, and again the reason you're doing that is because the changes that you make in on your pages via server seo um, and via the advice you get from the audit it could take effect in a couple of days but the reality is, is that I would normally allow at least a fortnight before I start panicking about stuff and sometimes I leave it for a month and you'd be surprised just how often it can, it can come right in about a month's time. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it gives you a relatively good overview of what's possible with Surfer SEO and believe me this is really only skimming the surface. This is an extremely powerful piece of software and it's really easy to fall in love with it but we're done for today and I'll talk to you again soon.